we have something very special. This amazing Porsche GT4 RS. Oh yes, it looks fast just sitting there and it is the ultimate driving machine. We're gonna see all about it. So come along, let's go. you don't just shift back and forth all of the time. So Daniel, thank you again for allowing me to drive this and kind of experience it. What drew you to this particular car? Because I know you've had a pretty, pretty sweet list of other cars. Yeah, so basically, uh, there was a point in my life when I was lucky enough to have a GT3 991 and a GT4 at the same time. Yeah. So I will jump back and forth from one car to another. And I always love how like agile the GT4 felt. You know, I like the smaller footprint. I like how it could just like toss it around from corner to corner and it just felt so balanced. But then I would get in the GT3 and I loved the engine and the transmission. The yeah. transmission was so responsive. The PDK was just an insane uh, transmission. I think like it's something you have to really experience in order for you to to be able to to know what it is about. You know, a lot of people right. think it's just another automatic, but it's far away from being another automatic. So there was a point when I saw a um, video and some photos leaked from a test from Porsche at Nürburgring yeah. with what it looked like to be a GT4 RS. Okay. So I went to the Porsche dealership and I was like, I, I just saw these photos. I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but I wanna be on, on the list for that car. Right. And they're like, well, you're number two already. So I was the second person. Oh, wow. Somebody actually beat me to it. And you know, we didn't know if it was gonna have the GT3 engine back then or not. Okay. It was just like, it, it just seemed very radical that Porsche would do it at the, at the time, especially with the Cayman having a 911 motor being like, wow, you know, it was like the, yeah. the craziest thing ever. But now that they decided to do it, I was like, <laughs> yeah. So it was a interesting process. That's cool that you're number two, so that, like I've, I've heard it's been a nightmare trying to get this GT3 RS and other GT higher end Porsches unless you're already on a list somehow. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I think before even the official release of the car, I had been on the list for like almost two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, like two years before they even announced that they were gonna actually like, like the dates of production or anything like that. Right. Yeah, and then I had to uh, wait some other time for when I got to spec my car. I got to, you know, like choose choose every option. So how long it. did that take from the process of you inquiring about it to actual delivery? Oh wow, man, it was like over three years. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. And we get mad when a motorcycle that I ordered um, back in a year ago takes an extra month or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it, it was a lot. A long time waiting, but you know, I think it was just something that uh, I I really desired. Yeah. You know, it was frustrating at times. You know, there's times when you're like, man, like, should I still do this or not? But you know, then the car came out, the reviews were were great. I'm like, well, I want to experience that. Yeah, I can, <laughs> I can definitely see why. The production type Ducatis, like, they're good, but they're not nearly what it. it a freaking super Legera is, yeah. um, or even the R. When you go to those top tier type bikes, everything works better together. And you can really feel that with this car as well. But I, I don't know, I've, 
driven different ranges of Porsches and they all sort of seem buttoned down no matter what they are. It's just how, what level of crazy do you want? This is a little bit more crazy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the transmission, the confidence you get. Oh my God. It just feels like it's just a real ride. It's, it, it sounds insane, but it, it's not intimidating by any stretch. Like there's some cars you get in and they're just like, oh my God, it's like you feel the power, it makes you shake. This, you could do these corners with one hand if you really wanted to, but I can't get over the shifting. Coming from, even though it was a little bit older, the F1 style um, dual clutch from the Ferrari to this, this is a little more refined and I believe has a little bit more, I don't say feel, but it's sort of what that is. Like there's, there's a little, a slight clunk, a little slight harshness to it that still gives you that mechanical experience. Like when you have a manual and you can feel a click into a gear or something like that. Yes, I, well, coming from the Lamborghini, definitely this is much faster than the, in terms of transmission yeah. response. Um, actually, I like to think this almost feels like when you shoot a gun. You know, it's like, it's instant. You know, it's like you press it and you, it's there. Yeah, it just it's went from just, second to first like nothing. Yeah. And it, it, this is a really odd, this is a very odd driving um, environment right now. We have a lot of cars in front of us that are going very slow because bicyclists on a road without shoulders. I don't understand. Whatever. But <laughs> it didn't bog. It didn't clunk. It wasn't trying to search for gear. Because there's some cars that get hung up like our Jag. It'll get hung up at this speed. It won't quite know what gear to go in. Yep. And even in manual mode when you're doing the shifting in the Jag, it, it still has a lag and a transition. This not so much. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want to go second, first, okay. Yeah, it's just, and it just goes right away. And, and it's, it's ready. Yeah, and it's not impinging on itself. That's a that's a weird rev shift to go from second to first, and it's like, yeah, fine, whatever. You can't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the what suspension mode are we in? Or uh, is, is there we're, a mode? We're in the other step, uh, a little bit stiffer. Right now it's. I was gonna say it's it's not nearly as harsh as I expected, and I will say the seats are also much much more comfortable than I was anticipating. I've I've heard people say these are they're harsh, they're unforgiving. Honestly, I, I, we talked about the M4 carbon seats. I think these are more comfortable than those because of the side bolsters down by your thighs. Yeah. Like I, I, I can pretty comfortable too. Yeah, I think these are phenomenal seats for what they are. And they actually fit me right. I'm, some seats around the shoulders, they, they pinch right underneath my shoulder blade. And it's just becoming a painful, painful mess. I think this is a car that's just the perfect merge between a drivable car and a race car. You know, yeah, I, mean, you I, I would agree. You can just like breathe the two of them. You have this car. You yeah, know, absolutely. It's, if you go into a race car, you know it's completely uncomfortable, you know, it's. This, it still manages to be somewhat comfortable. You have luggage space, you've got AC, you know, you've got your music, you've got, you know, power windows, but you still have the drive of a race car. Yeah, the, the noise. Like, I keep droning it down just because we're not really doing much as far as driving goes, but <laughs> I kept just want, I find myself wanting to power down and power back through the gears. Yeah. It's, what's interesting is like, it's almost like, a manual where you just want to row the gears yourself. Yes. This is, I'm sorry, people that think automatics aren't engaging anymore. You're wrong. This is as engaging as a manual I for that agree. sound alone. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the most <laughs> intoxicating sounds other than the, than what we hear there is <laughs> the downshift. <Yeah. laughs> Why do we, uh, we, I have an uh, exhaust on this car too. This is, has the JCR uh, titanium exhaust oh, rear section. It? Okay, and I've got the sole performance over axle pipes. Okay. If you 
won a GT4 RS and can drive it slowly, this car will allow you to drive it slowly. <laughs> it definitely sounds very unhappy about it. But if you're talking about this being a more nimble platform versus the 911, I can see that, especially in, a, in this type of environment, because this road is really narrow. There's a lot of overhanging brush, yeah. and the rocks come at you quickly, and then you obviously have the oncoming traffic, and it doesn't feel too big for this space, mm. where the only time I've felt that is on a motorcycle. <laughs> so that, it says a lot about the footprint of this thing. Give them a little space. starts to sound much aggressive like around 6500 7000 yes that's where and then it just sort of settles down right right around fifth gear they can go from like super angry to like nothing going on very quickly i love that it's got a, a little jacqueline hide to it where it's like you said it's it's calm it's got a little drone back out of the throttle a yeah. little bit in high gear but and that's also because of the exhaust oh is the it titanium okay. exhaust yeah gotcha. it, it doesn't have as much of a draw with the uh factory exhaust it's a trade-off yeah i guess <laughs> you said you drove out to texas yeah to austin did you have this exhaust on it uh, i that? had the over axle pipes okay but uh, it was um it, the the car is loud i mean it gets to you Especially after, you know, hours driving the car. I bet. Yeah, it's just that that induction noise. <laughs> it's like, so I had a Challenger Hellcat. One of the most fun things when I first got it was just stepping on a throttle a little bit. Yeah. Because you get that, eh, with the ridiculous whine from the supercharger. That induction noise on the shifts, especially your downshifts, are... To me, that's one of the things. That's better than a blow off valve to me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Especially because also the power is instant in this car. You know, you're not waiting for any turbochargers or. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping the road up here will be able to get a little bit, a couple turns, a couple dips, maybe turn around and do it again yeah, if, yeah. if it gets hairy. But also the right, the driving position, the seats. There's not that separation where you can lean back or forward. They're, they're kind of upright, but it's not a uncomfortable upright. You're, you're not crazy forward. And like yeah. you mentioned, it's that interesting mix between being a race car and a, a road car. It does it incredibly well. <laughs> like on bike crime. <laughs> Launch control? Do I want to do launch control? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> you know how to do it? I have no, I have no idea how to do launch control. Step on the brake. Okay. Uh, start accelerating, and then it's going to start, the RPMs are going to start going high, and just let the brake go. Oh, all the way up. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> I 
put your head on the seat, on the back of the seat. Holy you know? shit. <laughs> I've been launched off an aircraft carrier before. <laughs> that was almost as violent. <laughs> You know, it's crazy because um, there's not many cars that can give you that confidence so quickly. No. I'm saying quickly. I mean, you can get confident in any car after you've driven it for a long time, right? Yeah. Because you know how, how it reacts. Correct. But this is a car that you can get in it and you'll be like, okay, I can go fast. You know, like... Yeah, it's... It's a combination. <laughs> combination of the brakes, the chassis is, it's just flat, the car isn't doing anything that's unpredictable. Yep. Something I didn't really like about the C5 that I had, it had snap over steer randomly. You never knew when it was going to do it. And you still feel the, like, the feedback from the road, like you don't feel like disconnected with the road on this car, you so, know, like you, there's enough feedback. Does this have electric or hydraulic steering? I think these are electric. So, one of the drawbacks from electric is lack of feel. This doesn't, that, I ask that because it's got a weight to it. Yeah. Uh, a, a surprisingly heavy weight to it. And it's, it's you can't tell the difference between a hydraulic and this if you, if yeah. you jump between the cars. And that's a testament to how dialed in their electric steering is. Man, not a lot of not a lot of my pictures do it well. It's sort of the reason why I went away from the BMW because the steering felt like nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't tell what the front end was doing. Yeah. This, on the other hand, I can tell everything it wants to do, and it just wants to go fast. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's the Ricky he's Bobby like, of race cars. <laughs> it's happy when it's going fast. Like you see, like like that's when the car brides and it's like that in its element is when you start just pushing it a little bit. Yeah, you start throwing corners, you start throwing bumps, you start throwing these little dips that we have on the roads out here at it, and it's like, yeah, let's, let's do it more. There's eight grand. <laughs> I let it go tonight. Jesus. Yeah, you can let it hear the rail limiter a couple of times to hear it too. It's cool. <laughs> I was like, how can I do this in the safest way possible without the car in front of us? No, that, even at the red line, a lot of cars, once you hit that, it does some crazy stuff to the power delivery. They get jerky, it gets, it gets out of shape. That was just like, hey, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> shift. experience <laughs> I want to after driving the GT3 RS it was, a, it was a 2008 manual I've been infatuated with these cars and now this thing I know it's it's far and away your normal 718 Cayman but holy crap it doesn't matter it's <laughs> so good yeah I mean the cars that become legendary create experiences you know, I think this car will go down, you know, in the history books of Porsche because it creates a memory. It's remarkable. Like, you'll remember the sounds, you'll remember the drive, while other cars you kind of forget. You know, they're like, oh, I don't remember how it felt. Yeah. This you will remember. 100%. Uh, and like I said, that, that older GT3 RS is stuck in my head. Yep. I've driven older 911s as well, and the same thing, the driving experience was fantastic. This... Man, it's the level that I like being at. It's just a little nutty, a little crazy. It starts to feel like a little bit almost like a motorcycle crazy. Yeah, it's... You know, for a car, it's like... There's not many cars that do that, you know? The unbridled power that bikes have. Everyone's like, oh, you're never experienced that in a car. <laughs> I challenge you, uh, test this. <laughs> yeah. Daniel, appreciate it. This you're was very welcome. a heck of an experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this because I know I did. This is what that smile is all about. <laughs>
Hope you all join us for the next one. We'll see you later.